Welcome to our panel, Pagans and Heathens, Where on Earth Are We? An International Perspective. This year, we're not only coming from different parts of the world, we are also meeting virtually. Normally, I would introduce myself and acknowledge the spirits of the land. Today, however, I would like to acknowledge and greet the goddess of messages and communication, Iris, the rainbow goddess. Many colored goddess, Iris of the rainbow bridge. She who aids us in the fulfillment of humans' prayers. Welcome to our circle of friends, people of the earth, of the land, the sky and oceans. Bless us and guide us on our way. Hail Iris. I would like to briefly introduce our panelists. First, we'll be hearing from Selena Fox, the founder and executive director of Circle Sanctuary. I and Sarah Kerr will be presenting the second panel session. Sarah is the current president of the Pagan Federation. And I have been the international coordinator for PFI, Pagan Federation International, for many years. We've often worked together. And today we'd like to tell you a little bit more about our joint ventures. Harold Akrim is our third panelist, and he is the regional coordinator for PFI Norway and the whole region, which we are now calling Norden, which encompasses Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. And last but not least, we will be presenting Laura Gonzalez, who lives in the United States, but is Mexican. And she is a Circle Sanctuary Minister. So without further ado, let's start with our first panelist, Selena Fox. Thank you, Morgana. It is so wonderful to be here at the 2021 Parliament of the World's Religions, which for the first time is being held virtually, which is converging people of many paths and many places together for understanding, collaboration, communication, and working for a healthier and more sustainable planet. I've been involved in international interreligious work for many years since the 1960s. And myself and others from Circle Sanctuary, which is a global nature spirituality church legally recognized in the US, uh, has been part of the parliament since its centennial rebirth in 1993. So it's fabulous to be here online, being able to talk about paganism and its growth over the years. In 1993, pagans were part of the centennial parliament. In 1999, Pagans were part of that next convening of the parliament in Cape Town, South Africa. And then in 2004, even more pagans were part of that parliament. And for the first time at a parliament, we had a convening of pagans from six different continents all at the Parliament of the World's Religions in Barcelona in 2004. The presentation that I facilitated in 2004 was called Circles in the Greenwood. And in addition to being a moderator of the panel and sharing some of my own perspectives, Morgana was one of the speakers as was Dr. Michael York, who is spending part of his time in different parts of Europe as well as the USA. 
when I saw that there were so many different pagan traditions represented and pagans from a number of different places, I invited some additional pagans to be part of the discussion section of our parliament. And we had even other pagans from different countries also contributing, including we had a multilingual dimension as one of the parliament pagans from Barcelona had someone doing translation. What has happened since 2004? Paganism has grown. No one's really attempting to do proselytizing. That really isn't part of the pagan traditions I'm familiar with. However, paganism has become more visible. And as paganism has become more visible, more people have realize there are others who practice similarly, have allied traditions and more networking has happened. Uh, we're now having pagans in more than 200 countries in the world. So nearly every country in the world has some pagans doing individual and group practice. Another thing that's happened since 2004, when we had our circles in the Greenwood look at international paganism, is that the internet has grown. The World Wide Web had already been in existence, and indeed websites were helping people connect back in 2004. But then in the years that have followed has been the emergence of social media, apps, various smartphones. Pagans are now sharing videos. They are sharing photographs and doing podcasts. We are sharing information in ways that weren't possible back in 2004. Another thing that's been fabulous is that in some social media platforms, there is now a translation factor. And this translation factor makes it possible for those of us who are posting um, videos and audio information and photographs and blogs to actually be able to read in one's own language comments that have been posted. So we have become more multilingual and the number of pagan traditions have also proliferated. And we, as we've converged together face-to-face -face and in cyberspace and in interspace have found new and wonderful ways to work together for common understanding, and not only pagans of many paths, and by pagan, capital P, and not only mean Wiccans and Druids, but I use that term in a more inclusive way to also include pantheists and animists and heathens, and those of many different forms of nature spirituality or centered spirituality, eco-spirituality, so the, the language that we're using and the wording we're using to describe our traditions rooted in the sacred honoring and connection with nature have also increased. There has been the development of pagan studies as an academic discipline. And there are courses now being taught in universities in many parts of the world some people are getting their degrees with a specialty in pagan studies. There are pagan studies professors. There are pagan studies conferences. And that started before 2004, but have continued to grow and change. An important part of what has happened worldwide with paganism is as more understanding about paganism has gone into the larger world, 
there have been more opportunities to work for human rights, pagan religious freedom. So in the years since that happened in the United States, the pinnacle, the encircled five pointed star, earth, air, fire, water, spirit encircled has been an accepted symbol to go on grave markers issued by the US Department of Veterans Affairs for deceased veterans. And increasingly, pagans are able to do legally binding weddings to be officiants for many life passages around the world. These are some of the things that have unfolded since the parliament in 2004. And being here together in cyberspace is one of those wonderful developments. I give thanks for the opportunity to be part of this panel and give thanks to the parliament for continuing to converge diversity, not only pagans from many paths in many places, but having us included in the world interfaith community. And now we welcome into the conversation, Reverend Laura Gonzalez. Laura Gonzalez is a Circle Sanctuary minister. She's a podcaster. She's speaking at multiple sessions at this virtual parliament of the world's religions in 2021. And in her practice, which she will share, she is aligned with indigenous traditions. She has Mexican heritage. She connects with a number of cultures. She's multilingual and she has been part of our team with Circle Sanctuary in building bridges of understanding among those in our community and with the larger world who are practitioners of a variety of indigenous forms of nature ways. Typically, indigenous traditions aren't called religions, it's indigenous ways. I give thanks to Laura for being part of our panel. Thank you so much, Selena Fox. Thank you so much to everybody. Uh, Morgana, of course, for putting this panel together and everyone at the Parliament of the World's Religions to give us the opportunity to speak about these topics that are so important. And within the topic, the first thing that I will do is acknowledge the land from where I'm speaking to you. I am coming to you from Chicago, Illinois in the United States, the land of the Potawatomi, the Menominee, and the Miami. And I am originally coming to you from the land of the Mexica Tenochca people in Mesoamerica known as Mexico City. And that is a very nice segue to go into the conversation because I am very, very happy to report that most places, people and events that I have been part of lately, um, people are doing this land acknowledgement. There is a lot of healing that is still needs to happen in America, and I'm talking about the continent of America, not only the country of the United States. And semantics and words are really, really important to people who practice this nature-based religions. I am very fortunate and very privileged to call myself a pagan. I am very proud of being a pagan and part of Circle Sanctuary. Um, and I also, always make a decision to say I am a pagan and I also practice Mexican folk magic and I also practice native philosophies. See, those little words, they might not mean a lot to people, but they really do mean a lot to the practitioners, uh, not only such as myself, because I am removed from my tribes. Uh, colonizers did a very, very good job about removing people from their tribes and from their languages. I am, however, a Mexican and I identify as a Mexica or indigenous, but they are still living indigenous people in Mexico and all throughout uh, Central and South America. And um, it is a colonizer concept that does not make any logic to tell us 
the descendants of the um, colony that we are a different kind of people, that we are mestizos and that our people was uh, disappeared and at the same time not recognizing us as uh, Spaniards or descendants of the colonizers. So it is, there is a lot of wounds that are still open and that we are trying to heal. And when it comes to spirituality, we do call our practices spirituality, philosophy, practice, way of life. Most native people and indigenous people of the continent that I know of do not call those practices religion. And most importantly, they don't call these practices pagan religions. And even though to the untrained eye, they look like they are the exact same thing. We worship nature, we worship humans, we worship the elements. It is basically the same, but the name it does not resonate. When the colonizers came to the continent, they were coming with the idea of eradicating paganism and everyone and anyone that looked like they were a pagan practitioner deserved to die. So when they came to the continent, they asked the people either convert to our religion or you will die, you pagan, you know? So there is this historical, very heavy meaning to the world. And I have seen it to this day, uh, indigenous people from South America telling people, don't call me a pagan and people returning with, oh, but you're pagan because what you practice is da 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 da. So, the main thing is let us not tell indigenous people who they are or what they practice. They know who they are and they know what they are practicing. And if you are as privileged and as fortunate like me that you have one foot on each um, realm, make sure that you defend the right to close practices. And I know this is a hard, hard topic to bring up but they are closed practices from the African diaspora. They are closed practices from the indigenous peoples. And if you are not invited to share into those practices, as cool as they might be, as beautiful as they might be, as interesting as they might be, as much as they call on you, we have to decolonize our spiritual practices, our pagan practices. If you are not invited, you cannot take it. And if you're invited to share, share not only what is uh, likable or what is cool or what resonates with your spirituality, but also share on the struggle, also share on the rights of indigenous people, of immigrant people, of refugee people, of the people of color uh, rights, etc. cetera, uh, everyone that is marginalized. So in order to bridge the gap, I think what we ought to have is more of this, you know, places and situations where there is education. Um, yeah, saging is almost an international practice. A lot of people and practitioners on the world use herbs and the smoke of the herbs to cleanse their homes and people and their uh, ritual spaces. Only one practice is called saging. And it's just going that little extra mile to say I'm smoking my house and not saying I'm saging because saging is only what indigenous Native American people, I'm sorry, Native American people do. With that said, um, if you find yourself around a person such as myself, you know, I teach about this, I share about this, I invite people to practice. That doesn't mean all indigenous people from Mexico is gonna be that inviting. And I think it comes with the territory to learn to hear when people say no, and to be very respectful of that. If you like the cultures, learn from them. If there is something particularly that attracts you from that culture, find on your own background, uh, something similar. I can promise you there's going to be something. And if you cannot find it on your own, uh, background on, on your uh, backyard, then ask for permission and educate yourself and be respectful of one another. This is the very spirit of the Parliament of the World Religions. And I'm very honored to have shared with you all and 
let's continue honor the earth and honoring everything that is on this earth. Thank you very much. Thanks, Laura, for helping us to understand why it is so important that our contact and interaction with our indigenous brothers and sisters should be respectful and honorable. So important to remember this. Now we move to Europe, where Sarah and I will be talking about our experiences connecting with the international community and the development of Pagan Federation since its inception in 1971, celebrating 50 years of Pagan Federation. Thank you. The seeds were planted for the Pagan Federation we all know and love today back in 1968 when a small newsletter called The Wiccan began. It was all started by our founder John Score to keep a small group of Gardnerian Wiccans in touch but it quickly grew as it became clear there were more people in need of this kind of publication and that they weren't just Gardnerian Wiccans. By 1970, the group were working in earnest to campaign successfully against the introduction of an anti-witchcraft bill here in the UK. It was decided that more needed to be done than this. And so the Pagan Front was announced in September 1970 and ratified officially at May 1971 with a ritual written by Dorian Valiente. No matter where we are in the world, no matter which PF we're a part of, membership was then and still is open to pagans of all kinds, whatever their commitments may be or none, for as Doreen said in her opening speech, unity is strength and I welcome the fraternal unity of all sincere people who follow the pagan path. We may not always agree with each other, but we must support each other in our struggle for our right to follow the religion and lifestyle of our choice in this modern world. These are words we still hold to today across the world, and together we continue the work we began 50 years ago. We use the term pagan as an umbrella under which we shelter many different paths, traditions and beliefs, and all are welcome. Since then, the Pagan Federation has become worldwide. We have affiliated organizations across the world, Pagan Federation Ireland, Pagan Federation Scotland, and of course, Pagan Federation International and Pagan Federation Deutschland. We've all been busy campaigning and working to support pagans in having the same rights as the followers of other beliefs and religions. Our aims have always guided us to do that. We've always aimed to promote paganisms of all kinds positively and to provide reliable and trustworthy information to the media, to official bodies and the wider community. But what does that actually mean in practice? What have we done over the last 50 years to meet these aims? Well, we've worked with governments and their varying officers to ensure that the rights of pagans are enshrined in law. We appealed that Anti-Witchcraft Act back in the early 70s we secured religious exemption to be able to carry knives securely to and from rituals here in the UK. We appealed against anti-nudity provisions within the Public Order Act, giving prisoners access to pagan chaplains and getting a pagan oath available for pagans to swear on when they're in court. Alongside that, we were key in turning the tide against the satanic ritual abuse myth that perpetuated in the late 80s and early 90s. And here in England, we have worked alongside the Interfaith Network UK, the Religious Education Council, the police, the court system and prisons, the United Nations even, and most recently, the Network for Pastoral, Spiritual and Religious Care and Health to ensure a better understanding around pagans of all kinds and their beliefs and practices. I'm heartened to see that we're seeing an increase in people turning to pagan spirituality of all kinds. PF membership here in England and Wales has jumped a massive 35% over this last year. So it seems that paganisms of all kinds are appealing to the spiritual needs of people who are looking for something that helps them connect to their planet, as well as to their own beliefs about how the world is and should be. The PF, the Pagan Federation, will continue to be there to support them into the future, just as we have for the last 50 years with all our, all our affiliated organisations. As we heard from Sarah, the Pagan Federation has been around since 1971. In between times, Pagan Federation and P PFI have become affiliated organisations, PFI starting in 1997, 
with contacts already in Sweden, Portugal, Canada, and Brazil. In 2005, we became an affiliated organization proper as a legal entity. And from 19, 2006, we split off from PF completely, although we still maintain good contact. And during the pandemic, this has been even more apparent, having celebrated several meetings online. One of the things about the pandemic, of course, is that many people have been meeting online, and this has meant that we've been able to reach many, many people throughout the world. For example, on the Blessed Bee Day, we were able to connect with pagans in Portugal, Poland, but also in South America, celebrating the Earth on April 22nd. Again, we were able to connect with many, many people who would normally not be able to share celebrations with us. Since 2004, when Pagan Federation International was represented at the Parliament in Barcelona, which incidentally led to the formation of PFI Spain in 2006, PFI has continued to expand the networking in a very organic way. Reflecting a natural evolution, many people have joined PFI as we continued the initial mission of Pagan Federation, which was basically defending the rights of pagans, the anti-defamation work, and the dissemination of information in many different languages. Incidentally, the Pagan Federation International Forum, which exists since 2007, has become a treasure trove of many resources. So for many pagans and heathens and of different traditions, Pagan Federation International has always been very concerned with being available via internet, but using what we would call the cyber highway. This was the Pagan Federation International Symposium in Bulgaria, when we were working with many people from different diverse heathen traditions. But as always, our main inspiration has been reverence for Earth. Here we see the wonderful modern temple in near to Plovdiv, in a place called Saracel. And we've had many contacts in Bulgaria and discovered many pagan practices, which we were not aware of earlier. Again, illustrating how important the international connections are. Recently, we've been very much involved with the indig indigenous people of Brazil. We see again how important it is to connect with indigenous people Although we ourselves are now realizing that for indigenous people to call ourselves indigenous is something of an insult. And we refer to ourselves more often than not as people of the earth. Here we can see we have been re recently uniting with the indigenous people of Brazil in their fight against injustice and impending genocide. The dancing and the celebrations working towards a common celebration of the earth but also traditional ways and traditional wisdom. Pagans and heathens, where on earth are we? Well, just about everywhere. Many people don't actually like using these, the label pagan, <clears throat> but if we describe ourselves as people of the earth, then we're there in our millions, often quietly communing with spirits of the land, with nature in our groves, in the forest, but also in the cities and towns. The gods are everywhere, if we care to take notice. Joining our, with our indigenous brothers and sisters who are often displaced by force, we recognize the same desires to walk the red road, to dream the dreams, to shape shift and connect with the earth, the sea and the sky. We are nature, we are diverse, we are everywhere. The goddess has called to so many people. This is a text from the charge of the goddess, which has become a universal call to the goddess once a month when the moon is full. I, who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mystery of the waters and the desire of the heart of man, call unto thy soul, arise and come unto me. As we join in prayer, we recognize that the cycles of the moon, the seasonal cycles, <clears throat> are the ones which bring us together to unite us. Again, we don't look 
at the labels, but we again look at our hearts and souls and try to unite as one, one in a sacred mission, reverence to the earth. As we see in different countries, paganism has grown and evolved, but also in different ways. But we again have this common goal, often the earth and the environmental issues have been one of the most common goals we've had as far as joining together. As we join together in expressions and demonstrations against multinationals, against those who would exploit the earth. This is where we found the most of our international contacts. Again, I am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mystery of the waters and the desire of the heart of man. Call unto thy soul, arise and come unto me. Let's celebrate our commonalities in this wonderful planet, earth, our home. Thank you. Moving on from the United Kingdom and the Netherlands, we will now meet Arild, Arild from Norway. He is a representative of PFI Norway and also the area we call PFI Norden, which encompasses Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Sweden and Finland. He will be talking about Back to the Roots, the Old Gods, are awake. Welcome, Arild. Hello and welcome to Istrehogan in Larvik, Norway. Behind me is a stone circle where there could have been funeral rites. There could have been ceremonies or rituals concerning death, but it could also have been rituals or ceremonies concerning life. There are three stone circles here and archeologists can only speculate what they were used for. This whole area, with Ludwig included, is known as the Westfold, where all around us, there are so many remnants of the pagans, or popularly known as the Vikings. My name is Odd, and I am a pagan, I am a Wiccan, and I am an Osotruid, and belong to the denomination known as Bifrost here in Norway. Bifrost has been part of European resurgence of paganism. Here in Norway, it's been a long idealistic and bureaucratic battle, but today Bifrost can legally wed people. They've been assigned a funeral plot by the Norwegian government to where they can officiate funerals pagan funerals, or our impression of what a pagan funeral could have been like, because it is interesting that we don't really know what the old rituals were like. Uh, we have sources like the Edic Saga, or we have the Voluspa, but they don't really speak of what sort of rituals were done and how. And a, a person that I met once said it so nicely. She said, it's an old cult in a new suit. And this is maybe a similarity that the rising of paganism uh, today is doing. We are recreating the old ways, but we're using the names of the old gods, of course. We're using what we know and what we think happened. So Europe has seen the presence now for 1,000 years of Christianity. First the Catholic and after that the Reformation and the Evangelical Lutheran. But it hasn't resulted in the removal of the ancient beliefs from the collective awareness. Dormant or hibernated pagan practices in their modern form started to come back in the second half of the 20th century as a response to global changes. And for Europe, it is interesting to know that this is only the last 800 years where maybe paganism went dormant, maybe it went into hibernation, and but we don't know 
but it was very much alive in our folklore and in our stories. I remember as a child, I would hear the story when it was thundering and lightning that, oh, relax, it is just Thor with his hammer racing across the sky. So the old gods never really left. But maybe because here in Westfold, we have the area known as Merlin, where some of the last pagans in Westfold fell to the Christian army that came down from the north of Norway. And maybe in some ways it was what the Edda talks about, the Rangnarok, the death of the gods, in some ways at least. And but the Ragnarok never speaks of all the gods dying or all the old ways going away. It simply talks about how some gods unfortunately did not survive, but others would rise and the world would be a much better place afterwards. So over the last 30 years now, maybe this is where we're going again as pagans, that the resurgence of the old ways, but this time, we're bringing with us the new battles. We're bringing with us eco-awareness, equality, human rights. This is our focus. This is the banner that we're now uniting under. And maybe that is a future that holds better values, values that we can relate to and are much more comfortable with than let's say organized religions values. And in some ways too, people are seeking more out of spirituality than they're seeking out religiousness because there is a subtle difference. A religion and its religiousness is often filled with dogmas while your spirituality is something that is very vivid and very alive to you. And nobody really gets to tell you how you're to do it. Um, and this is one thing that is important to the also through in Norway as well. Nobody tells you how to practice your, if you have it as a religion, nobody tells you how to practice it. We simply organize sometimes. We organize blut, we organize festivals. Sometimes we organize weddings. Um, but, Walking with the old gods. There is a freedom in it. And this freedom shouldn't be taken lightly because so many brilliant people have spent now, again, the last 30 years, having this battle of wills, wills against bureaucracy, wills against old preconceived ideas that, you know, pagans, what are they? And they don't really have anything organized. But we should always be mindful of that in our current world situation, increasing contact with other cultures and faiths has not only opened the eyes of many people in the Western world to the global diversity of human spirituality. It has also for some opened the way to a reconsideration of forms that religion that exists not only in exotic corners of the world, but in their own dimly remembered past. So I would like to end my talk from a poem from the older Edda. And it goes like this. Hail to the day, hail to the sons of day, hail to the night and her daughters. Look upon us with kindly eyes and grant to all of us victory. Hail to the gods, hail to the goddesses. Hail to the bountiful earth, grant us speech and wisdom and healing hands for as long as we shall live. Thank you. Thanks to all of us that have been here sharing our perspectives about paganism, about indigenous ways, about heathenism, nature spirituality, nature religion, in its diverse forms around the planet. I give thanks to all who have joined our session live and to all who have joined it later as part of an archive. 
I think one of the things we can all take from this session is the honoring of nature, which goes across many different spiritual traditions. And while the ancient nature religions and contemporary forms of nature spirituality, paganism, indigenous ways, heathenism, pantheism, animism today have that as the core, I do think that whatever our religion or philosophy or spirituality, that this is something that we have in common, that we are part of the great biosphere on planet Earth. It is very important that we find ways not only to communicate with each other and to share concerns and strategies for a healthier planet, but that we collaborate with each other. We not only include prayers within our particular practices, but that we work together as a community of humans from around the planet to work for a healthier environment. In 2021, as we are doing this virtual parliament of the world's religions, there are people around the planet, not only gathered here, but also taking part in environmental activist activities because the United Nations is converging an environmental summit at the end of this month in Glasgow, Scotland. So as we conclude this panel, let us all put forth each in our own way, the blessings and the thanksgiving of the land where we are, of the planet Earth, our home, and find ways that we can work together, deepen our understanding and improve our relationships with each other and other humans, but that greater circle of nature of which we are a part here on planet Earth and beyond in the cosmos. So be it, aho, all hail, awen, blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you very much for everybody for listening to our wonderful panelists and God, God has blessed you wherever you are. Blessed be.